Hey guys, hi and do welcome to the video. In this small video, I would be explaining you about DynamoDB GSI and then essentially we'll be creating a very simple GSI on AWS console. So let's get started with the video. All right. So GSI, uh, if you don't know what GSI is, I'll try my best to cover GSI here, okay? An index with a partition key and a sort key that can have a different from those on the base table. A global secondary index is considered global because queries on the index can span all over the data in the base table across all the partitions. A global secondary index has no size limitation and has its own provisional throughput settings for read and write, uh, read and write activity that are separate from those of other table. All right, what do I mean by that? I'm gonna explain you. I have a demo, so just hang on with me, okay? Uh, let's take a scenario here, right? This is their official documentation, Amazon, right? So um, they have given a very nice uh, scenario, right? So let's read that. Suppose that you wanted to write a leaderboard application to display the top score of each game. So you have a user ID game title, top score, you know, you have a date, wins and losses. A query that specified a key attribute as user ID and game title would be very efficient of course right with user id and uh, you know with user id and essentially game title it would be very efficient but in situation if your application needed to retrieve data from game scores based on game title um, then only it needs to use a scan operation so what this is saying is say i need to retrieve the scores uh, based on the title right well, in that case, I have to write a scan query, which will be expensive. In DynamoDB, scan will use uh, will scan all the items in the in the table. We want to avoid that things, right? So, what the author says that you can set up a GSI, which means GSI allows you to have a different partition key and a sort key. So now, the author says that you can have a partition key or a primary key. In layman language, we can set the hash key as game title and we can have essentially the sort key as the score that way it becomes much more easy i can say hey give me the top score for attack ships right so it becomes easier right uh, to show you a demo on how easy that is i have a very you know i'm i try to go very simple right not make things complicated so i'll click on explore table right uh, and uh, let me go to let me go to my dashboard first and then I'll show you a small demo. I have a table and um, uh, I'll show you how easily you could set it up. So I'll click on DynamoDB. I'll click on tables, click on table learn, click on explore, right? Just wanna show you how I'm navigating. So I have all this, right? So if you see over here, my primary key or my hash key, just the way the Dynamo language is, my hash key is essentially last name and my sort key is first name. Just for example, okay, very basic I'm trying to show. So, which means I can immediately get an item with the last name, very fast, quickly. And my sort key is my first name, right? So, if if a person has a lot of, um, you know, same last name, like Shah, 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 Somil, Nitin, right? So, uh, I can say, give me all the people with the last name Shah, then I can do a sort on that, right? But in scenario, let's say I wanna query my data based on Let's say I wanna essentially get all the people whose, uh, I wanna get all the people um, whose job title is, let's say a financial planner, just an example, right? In this case, I would wanna query my data based on the job, right? It makes more sense if I have my job as my hash key, and then my sort key would be the first or last name, depending upon what we, what we want the sort key, right? So that's called GSI. When you set up GSI, data is copied to a new table. It copies the data. Amazon manages all the sync between that, which means anytime an insert or update happens on your base table, Amazon will sync it to your GSI table. So, Samuel, okay, that makes sense. Well, but how do you set one? Well, it's very easy. You click on uh, index, you click on create index, right? So now, for example, uh, I wanna query on job, so I can have job. And then let's say my, my sort key, it would be first name, for example, right? So this becomes the index name. You can specify uh, RCUs and WCUs, or you can you know leave it to default. Um, then you can put the projection type to all and click on create index. This will create an index here. Uh, as you can see, I already have one. So now when I go back here, uh, 
So as you can see here, I did it for first name and jobs. You could do for jobs and first name as well, whatever your use case is, right? So now if I go to the table, if I come to explore. So now my base table, my, my, my partition key is last name and my sort key is first name. In my GSI table, uh, right? So if I click on query and if I click on the drop down, you'll see this first name. So this is your essentially hash key and your job becomes your partition key. So now I can say, hey, give me everyone with the first name Sophia, right? And then maybe sort ascending, I could do that and I get all the results. So this is a very small tutorial on global secondary index. How many global secondary index you can have? You can have 20 global secondary index per DynamoDB table. If you want more, you could uh, contact AWS to give you set up more. Remember, this comes at a cost, right? When you set up GSI data is copied, right? So uh, there is a cost associated with that. But um, if you wanna read more, they have a lot more right here. This is an entire beautiful article. They have written everything in detail about GSI. I hope you have enjoyed this small walkthrough about global secondary index in DynamoDB. Uh, upcoming session, we'll try to learn, you know, create this table using serverless or Terraform, right? We'll learn about that. Last session, we learned a PyNamoDB, how we can create, update, delete items. So if you want to watch, links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Next video, we'll explore serverless and DynamoDB. We'll try to create the resources using serverless framework, okay?